Hi there. Now, I'm assuming you've watched the previous video in this series where we've been talking about how to work out the equation of the locus of a point P that moves in a plane. And here's another example, very similar to the previous example, but just a little harder, where we've got the point A with coordinates minus 2, 3 and B with coordinates 1, 4. And we've got to find the equation of the locus of the point P where 3 times the distance AP equals the distance BP. And you've got to sketch the locus of P. So do try and have a go at this one before looking at the uh, video solution. Well, first of all, then, what we need to do is just start our sketch. If we mark the points A and B on, with coordinates minus 2, 3 and B with coordinates 1, 4, then we're looking for a point P where 3 times the distance A to P equals the distance B to P. So one of the many places that I could place P would be, say, roughly this point here. I can see that this distance would be about 3 times that distance. So let's just say that that's one of the many places that P could be at. So we'll just call that P having coordinates x, y. So if I mark in those distances, we've got AP there and we've got P back to B. Now we need to build up an equation and it's going to be based on this condition here. 3 times the distance AP equals the distance B to P. So we're looking at working with distances between points. And you should be familiar with this formula here for the distance between two points, say A and B. So using this result then, we're going to have 3 times the distance AP. So to get that distance AP, it's going to be the square root then of the difference between the x coordinates all squared. So I'm just going to write x minus minus 2. So that's going to be x plus 2 then and that's all squared, and then it's plus the difference between the y coordinates, which will be y minus the 3 there, and that'll be all squared. And this is going to be equal to the distance bp, so that's going to be the root then of all of x minus the 1 there, all squared, plus the difference between the y coordinates all squared, which is going to be y minus the 4 there, and that's squared. Now, to save time, I've worked out these results for you. What we would want to do next is to square both sides. If we square both sides and open up the brackets, we're going to get this result here. And then what I'd want to do next is to expand this bracket and then group up terms on one side. And that leads to this result here. Now, this looks like the equation of a circle. But I prefer this in a different format if I'm to work out the centre and the radius of the circle. I like to have x squared and y squared here. So I need to divide throughout by 8. Dividing through by 8 gives us this result. I've cleaned up 38 divided by 8 to 19 over 4 and 46 over 8 to 23 over 4. Same with 100 over 8, that's 25 over 2. Now I'm assuming that you're familiar with equations of circles. From this stage, what we tend to do is complete the square over the x squared and the 19 over 4x terms. And complete the square as well on the y squared and the minus 23 over 4y. So doing this in the usual way, what we end up with is this result here. And then I've just put plus 25 over 2 in on the end. So cleaning this up further gives us this result. Now when it's in this form, we should be able to find the centre and radius. The centre will be negative 19 over 8 for the x coordinate and the y coordinate will be 23 over 8. And the radius will be the square root of 45 over 32. So what we get then is these results here. 
When I square root 45 over 32, you end up with 3 root 10 over 8, which is approximately 1.2. So we've got a circle then with this as our center and with a radius of roughly 1.2. So marking that on, we end up with this as our sketch. This then is our circle and that is the locus then of P. Just mark that in there. Okay, so I hope it's given you an idea anyway on how to work with questions like this. Most of the time you're going to be finding then that you're going to need this formula. Always let P have coordinates x, y and depending on the condition that you're given you should be able to form an equation and by simplifying it like in this example you should be able to find out what its locus looks like okay